Well, this is not a good sign for the American economy. Monthly job numbers have just been released, and they show more than 300,000 people have stopped working or even looking for work just this month. That number is now at its highest since August of 1978 during the Carter administration. So when it comes to getting a job and getting ahead in this country, have Americans just given up? Mia Love is the mayor of Saratoga Springs, Utah, a candidate for the United States Congress, and our guest this morning. Mayor, it's nice to see you this morning. So Nice to see you. Is, is, is this a, a revision of the American dream? Are we going to have to change our assumptions about the possibility of getting ahead in this country? I hope not. I mean, many people are concerned about, you know, about the country and where the country is headed. Some people have given up. But I'm telling as many people as possible not to give up. I believe that if we stay in this fight, our best days lie ahead of us. And so, you know, there, you, you could see that there are a lot of people that are, that are just discouraged with the way things are going. But uh, the last thing you should do is give up. As a matter of fact, I said that this country will be healed by people, not by Washington. And if we give up as people, then, then we will lose the American dream. So the subprime meltdown happens in 2008. The government since then has literally poured trillions into the economy trying to right it. And it seems like the more government intervenes, the more stagnant the economy becomes and the more sort of hopeless a lot of Americans become. Why? Same thing always happens. We've seen it over and over again. The more government involvement, the less, the lower the quality, the higher the cost. I mean, if you think about it, in, in poverty programs, uh, our country spends over a trillion dollars a year to try and end poverty, except it keeps growing and growing and growing, which tells you that it's not working. People are poorer, um, people are discouraged, and under this president's policies, it's actually hurt the most vulnerable and the most vulnerable and the poorest among us. These are not abstract issues for you. You have firsthand experience with some of this. Tell us. Well, you, my parents, I mean, if you talk about the American dream, back in the 70s, my parents immigrated here with $10 in their pockets. They had no worldly possessions. They had no home, no car, just the clothes on their backs. And they were able to uh, find work, uh, work really hard, put three kids through school, uh, do everything they can and realize their American dream. I remember when we moved into uh, our first house that my parents bought, and it was a big deal for them. And, you know, looking back now and seeing those sacrifices and what they've been able to accomplish in this country is incredibly encouraging. We have to just go back there. We've got to go back and rebuild that American character and, um, you know, and, and make sure that we're that the policies are able to help people achieve their dreams, not yes. by giving everything to everyone, but by giving but, but by allowing them to have the opportunity to work and grow the economy so that they can go and get what they need on their own and become self-sufficient and independent. Things work pretty well for a couple of hundred years in this country. It might be worth looking at the lessons my, of, of those years. It might be worth going back and looking at what worked, yes. It, yeah, it might be. Mia Love, joining us from Utah. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.